Hey guys, it's Carolyn. Um, I'm really sorry about the kind of interesting lighting. Um, I had to kind of improvise a little bit because the sun's going down and I'm in a different house. Um, so it's like that light is on and then the kitchen light, so kind of casts a weird look on my face. But anyway, um, okay, my video today is I have a book haul and yeah, um, the, uh, book buying ban is it going so well but I kind of I don't know I don't really count I don't know if I should count this or not because it's like I traded we went to a used bookstore um my friend and I did and I traded in some of my books that I don't want that I was going to give away like I traded some of those and got credit at the store and then I did have to pay um some extra but the money that I paid with was technically a gift, so I don't know whether I should, I technically didn't spend any of my own money, so I don't know if that should count or not. But anyway, on with the book haul. Um, this, as I said, we went to a used bookstore um, that's kind of close by, and unfortunately I think the Salvation, like going to Salvation Army store has kind of, um, ruined me a little bit, um, or it spoiled me, because all of those books are like a dollar or two dollars, so I kind of have been expecting that at any used bookstore, and obviously that's not true, um, like, this used bookstore is a chain in my town, and it's like a business, so since it's a proper business, I mean, I'm not saying Salvation Army isn't, but it's like, I don't know, since they're like a proper bookstore, I guess that's why they charge more, um, so, yeah. But, I mean, I still got them all really cheaply. Like, I'm gonna say that I got each one for about $6, or, like, probably, like, six seventy five ish Um, like, average. So, let's get started. I'm so excited about this, you guys. Okay. Anyway. First, we have Sarah's Key by Tat Tatiana de... Rosne? Rosne? I don't know. But, um, I picked this up in Barnes & Noble, like, um, t just to look at a couple of times. But it was enough times that I really wanted this. So, yeah, I was really excited when I found this. Um, and I'll read you guys the back. Um, it says, Paris, July 1942. Sarah, a 10-year-old girl, is taken with her parents by the French police as they go door-to-door -door arresting Jewish families in the middle of the night. Desperate to protect her younger brother, Sarah locks him in a bedroom cupboard, their secret hiding place, and promises to come back for him as soon as they are released. Sixty years later, Sarah's story intertwines with that of Julia Jarmond, an American journalist investigating, investigating the Roundup. In her research, Julia stumbles onto a trail of secrets that link her to Sarah and to questions about her own romantic future. So, yeah, this just sounds amazing, and I really like um, stories that start off in the past and then kind of pick back up in the present, and then you kind of get to know what happens in between that time. Um, so this just looks really amazing, and, um, I'm really excited to read it, but I'm guessing I'm gonna cry a lot. It, from that synopsis, it sounds like I'm gonna cry a lot. Next is Elegance of the Hedgehog, uh, by Muriel Barbary. Um, and, again, I've picked this up and looked at it a bunch of times in Barnes & Noble, and, um, my friend actually bought it one time, um, when we were in there. So, again, that kind of made me want it. And then, what really kind of set me off on getting it, um, other than the really good price when I found this, was, um, Words of a Reader's, uh, talking about this, like, her, uh, review of it. But she also includes this in a list of, like, her favorite, um, melancholy books. So, uh, yeah, it just, the way she made it sound, I was like, I really need to get this. Um, and I really like, I liked 
her cover, but I also really like the American cover. Um, I like the girl on the front and how the doors are kind of illustrated. And then I love the inside flaps, like how it's a paperback with, um, I think these are called French flaps, where it's a paperback, but it has flaps like a hardcover. Um, but yeah, okay, I'll read you guys the inside of this one. We are in an elegant hotel, Hotel Peculier, in the center of Paris. Rene, the building's concierge, is short, ugly, and plump. She has bunions on her feet, she is cantankerous, and addicted to television soaps. Her only genuine attachment is to her cat, Leo. In short, she is everything society expects from a concierge at a bourgeoisie building in a posh Parisian neighborhood. But Renee has a secret. She is ferocious. She's a ferocious autodidact um, who furtively devours art, philosophy, music, and Japanese culture. With biting humor, she scrutinizes the lives of the building's tenants, her inferiors in every way except that of material wealth. Then there's Paloma. I love that name, by the way. Um, a super smart 12-year-old and the youngest daughter of the Joses, Josses, Joses, I don't know, um, who live on the fifth floor. Talented, precocious, and startlingly, start, startlingly, sorry, uh, lucid, she has come to terms with life's seemingly, or seeming futility, and has decided to end her own on the day of her 13th birthday. Until then, she will continue hiding her extraordinary intelligence behind a mask of mediocrity, acting the part of an average preteen high on pop subculture, a good but not an outstanding student, an obedient if obstinate daughter. Paloma and Renee hide both their true talents and their finest qualities from a world they suspect cannot or will not appreciate them. They discover their kindred souls, or yeah, they discover their kindred souls when a new tenant arrives, a wealthy Japanese man named Ozu. He befriends Paloma and is able to see through Renee's time warm disguise to the mysterious event that haunt that has haunted her since childhood. This is a moving, witty, and redemptive novel that exalts the quiet victories of the inconspicuous among us. This sounds amazing. I'm so excited to read this. Um, and I'll, I'll have to ask my friend um, if she's read it yet and what she thought, but I'm so excited. And it's in really good condition. Like, it's in awesome condition. And, okay, this is kind of folded a little weirdly, but... Um... Next, Middlesex by Jeffrey Eugenides. Oh, I'm so excited, you guys, about this. Okay, um, aside from the whole Oprah's Book Club thing, because I feel like that puts way too much pressure on a book. But anyway, um, so I actually finally own most, well, I don't know how many books he's written, but this is the third one of his I own, and it's also... Um, I think I own the three most popular, if he has written others, I think I own the three most popular, um, which is, I already have The Marriage Plot and Virgin Suicides, and now I have Middlesex. But yeah, I'll read you guys the back. Middlesex tells the breathtaking story of, um, Cat Calliope? Cat Calupe? I don't know how you say her name. Um, Stephanides, and three generations of the Greek-American Stephanides family who travel from a tiny village overlooking Mount Olympus in Asia Minor to Prohibition-era Detroit, witnessing its glory days as the Motor City and the race riots of 1967 before they move out to the tree-lined streets of suburban Gross Point, Michigan. To understand why... Uh, Calliope, Calupe, I, I don't know his name, is not like other girls. She has to uncover a guilty family secret and the astonishing genetic history that turns Callie into Cal, 
are one of the most audacious and wondrous narrators. Actually, if you've read any of the books in this hall, please let me know. But also, um, if anyone knows how to pronounce her name, because I think I've got the last name down, but her first name, I really don't know how to say. So uh, please, if you know how to say it, um, let me know. But yeah, so this is the third book of his I own. I haven't read any of them yet, but they all sound amazing. Um, and I went when I went to the National Book Festival um, to see John Green last September, um, there was another girl who was uh, here to see, who was there to see him, and she had this book, and I think she got him to sign it, and she was just raving about this. So that's one of the reasons why I really wanted to get my hands on it. So excited for that now. Next, you guys. So exciting. Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close by Jonathan Safran Thor. And um, I know you guys have probably, most of you have heard of this book, but I'll read you the back anyway in case you don't know what it's about. Um, okay, nine-year-old Oscar Schell uh, has embarked on an urgent secret mission that will take him through the five boroughs of New York. His goal is to find the lock that matches a mysterious key that belonged to his father, who died in the World Trade Center on the morning of September 11th. This seemingly impossible task will bring Oscar into contact with survivors of all sorts on an exhilarating, affecting, often hilarious, and ultimately healing journey. Okay, so I first heard about this when the movie came out, and I really wanted to see the film, but I also really wanted to read the book first. Um, and I was just going to see the film without reading the book, but then I just didn't get around to it. So now I'm purposely going to read the book before I rent the film. Um, and it just sounds amazing. And I know I'm going to have to read it with tissues, just like most of these books, actually. I'm pretty sure most of these I'm going to be reading with tissues. Okay. Next is um, Turn of the Screw and the Aspirin Papers by Henry James. Um, I think I showed this in another haul, um, a different copy. I think I showed the Barnes & Noble copy in another haul, but I ended up returning that one because I was like, oh, well, I can get it at the library, so yeah. But then this was really cheap. I think it was like $2 or something. Um, this was the cheapest book in this haul, because I know I said that they averaged to be about $6, but I think it's because more, certain books were more expensive than others, and I think this was, like, two bucks. So, I had to get it, because I really feel like I have to own that book, because I saw the BBC series, and it was so good, um, or the miniseries, that I was like, okay, I have to own it and read it. Okay, last but certainly not least is Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. Um, I've wanted to read this for quite some time. Um, I actually kind of wanted to read, um, I think it's called Garden of the Beasts first, just because that one sounded more appealing to me, but this is the first one, so I kind of really do want to read this first. And um, so when I found this, for like six dollars. I was really excited. And you guys, I'm just really excited for most of these. Not only because I finally have them, but just because I got such good deals on these. Like, I think the majority of these, other than Turn of the Screw, were like 15 bucks a piece um, retail. And then in the store, they were like between six and six seventy five. So that's less than half price for all of these. And they're all in really good condition. Like, the one in the worst condition is definitely Turn of the Screw, and it only has, like, one crease down the spine. The rest of them are in such good condition. And I'm also, this is going to sound cheesy, I'm kind of fond of this because it has a little border sticker on the back, and Borders went out of business a couple years ago. Um, so I'm kind of extra fond of this book because it has a border sticker on it. I know that's stupid, but I don't know. I, I miss my Borders, okay? Um, but yeah, so that's, that's my haul. And there's another haul that I filmed a couple weeks ago that I ended up having to delete because I had too much space 
or it was my camera was too full, whatever. Um, and it wouldn't, it didn't get around to uploading, unfortunately. Um, but I'm gonna redo that video, and it's like comics and then books that um, I was given or lent um, by people. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna redo that video and have that up for you guys soon. Um, so, yes. Um, I'm so excited about these books. But yeah, anyway, so comment down below if you've read any of these, and please, if someone has seen, um, if someone has read Middlesex, please let me know how to pronounce that girl's name, and hopefully this will upload, because I just looked at it and it's like 15 minutes long. But anyway, um, thank you guys so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe and comment down in the doobly-doo, and, um, I will talk to you guys later. Bye!